Can you find motivated sellers using Facebook ads without being a tech genius? How long does it take? How much does it cost? What kind of results can I expect from that? If those are your questions, I'm going to answer them here in today's video. I'm going to answer them by showing you and walking you through a case study. This here was posted in one uh, in, in my Facebook group uh, that I moderate uh, for uh, real estate investors that were helping with this particular strategy. This is from a, a client that posted this. Today is March 2nd. He posted this on February 28th, not that long ago. So this I'm showing you last year's, you know, or two years ago results. This is from a couple days ago. And he says 22 leads in the last seven days, 75% contact rate, four contracts, and one closing in two weeks. And so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to dissect this post here and explain to you exactly what he did to get, through, to get these results. So then that way you can consider whether or not you want to do the same thing and you want to make some money using Facebook ads for motivated sellers. Now, he said in his post that he had a 75% contact rate. What does that mean? So in Facebook, contact rate is, is that you're going to have a certain number of leads of property owners that submit their information online and then are requesting an offer. You are not going to be able to get a hold of 100% of those property owners. For whatever reason, with Facebook, you, you, you know somebody was looking uh, and saw your ad on their device you know, they were in a moment of passion. They said, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to input my information. They put it in, but guess what? Then they just changed their mind. They forgot about it. Life got in the way. Something happened. And now you're trying to get a hold of them and you cannot get a hold of them. It's just the nature of the beast. That being said, we do have some metrics that we go by. And that is at, that, at a minimum, we want a contact rate of 50% at a minimum when we're targeting property owners nationwide. However, if we are narrowing down our, our area that we're targeting for Facebook ads, then we want that contact rate to be higher than that. And that is because of the fact that we are now paying more per lead. The way that Facebook works and when you are advertising on Facebook is that uh, the, the wider the area, the lower the cost per lead down. And then you are going to have a certain number of those sellers you're not going to be able to get a hold of. However, if you then narrow down the area, let's say that I only wanted to get leads in Florida and that is it, then that's going to increase your cost per lead. But however, because you're increasing your cost per lead, you want to make sure that you get a high contact rate because then um, otherwise then your net cost per lead is going to be significantly higher, right? Because you're going to have, you got 10 leads, eight you were, able, you were able to get a hold of, two you were not. So then that means that then you have eight leads really. And if you won't divide your total cost by eight, then that increases your net cost uh, per lead. So keep that in mind. Now, uh, so 75%, what he said is he got 75%. That is a very, very good number, especially for nationwide. Contract to lead ratio, because I get this question asked all the time. How many contracts, how many contracts does it take in order, you know, how many leads does it take for me to get a contract uh, when I'm running ads on Facebook for motivated sellers? Um, he had four contracts to 22 leads. That is a very, very good number, extremely good number. Now, this here depends very much on your capabilities. You know, how well are you with speaking with property owners? You know, do you sound like a buffoon? Do you sound like a bumbling idiot? Do you sound like you just wa walked off the turnip truck? I don't know. If you sound like that, then you should get some training. You should learn how to talk to sellers. The better you are at talking with sellers, the better you're going to be able to handle all of the opportunities, regardless of whatever strategy you apply, whether it be Facebook or any other strategy for that matter how well you analyze the properties in order to determine what's a viable lead and what's a not a viable lead. Because a lot of times, you know, you could have great leads coming through and you are just not negotiating well with them. You are not analyzing them correctly and they're slipping through your hands and you don't even know it. And you're thinking that, oh my gosh, this thing isn't working. But the problem is that you are not working in the way that you should be working. And so therefore now you're not taking advantage of your opportunities. I asked him a couple questions and I'm going to share with you his answers to help you. I asked him, Hey, what geography are you targeting? Uh, how much is your cost per lead? And are you sending people to a lead form or to a landing page? Now, what he said is he's running a campaign and I'll dissect these here individually. He's running a campaign nationwide. His cost per lead is $12 per lead and he's using lead forms. 
Now, $12 per lead is a very good, very good uh, cost per lead. It's right around the bottom uh, in terms of like the best you can get when you're running ads uh, nationwide. Typically, you're going to be somewhere around $15, maybe $20. $12 is a great cost per lead. Now, when he says he's doing things nationwide, that means that when he goes into, into the targeting area of Facebook, then what he's doing is he's just adding the United States of America as his only targeting, and then that's, and then that's it. So he's getting leads from everywhere in the USA. So what kind of leads can you expect from running ads nationwide when you're doing this with Facebook? Uh, you're going to get great leads in large metro areas. You're going you're to get a lead in you know Arizona and Florida and all these markets that are really great. And you're going to pay a lot less money for those leads than if you were targeting those states directly. You're also going to get great leads in small markets that are still very viable. That might be small markets for you because I live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So for example, I may get a lead in Midland, Texas. And Midland, Texas is a relatively, it's a small town compared to where I live, but it's still a pretty robust area. Uh, you're going to also get leads in, in very small towns that you're thinking, I don't know if there's going to be anything there for me. But then if you look, you might be able to spot that that property where it's located is only about, you know, 15, no more than 30 minutes away from the lar a larger town, which means that then now that deal might be viable because the buyer for that deal may come from that next town over. So keep that in mind. However, last but not least, you are going to get leads that are going to be in the middle of nowhere. Like you look and there's, there's, there isn't a, any sort of significant town uh, within an hour. And so a lot of times with those leads, we're not going to be able to do anything with them simply because we're just not going to be able to, to find buyers, even if we get a good price. And now he said that he was using lead forms right here at the bottom. He says he's using lead forms as well. And I asked him what kind of lead form he was using. And he said specifically he's using the more qualified lead form. Now, what does that mean? Because you're thinking, what, Chico, what the hell are lead forms? And what does that mean more qualified? So lead forms is when you create a page in Facebook uh, under your publishing tools, uh, you have a form library. And you can create these forms. And let me see if I can zoom in here that you can, um, you'll be able to, you can create forms that will allow you to collect somebody's information right on Facebook. So when somebody clicks on your ad, they don't need to leave Facebook. A pop-up form will, will come up right on their phone, right on Facebook. They'll fill in their information, and then they'll come back to Facebook. That's what's called a lead form. Now, what he used is, uh, in, our, in our lingo, is a, is a more qualified lead form. So what that is, is that this is uh, an example of the lead form here, where we're asking them a bunch, a bunch of questions. Right, we're asking who's living at the property. What, what is the current condition of the property? How soon would you like to sell? What is the best time of day, of call, of, of day to call? What repairs are needed? What is the ultimate goal with the property? If we offered you cash and paid full price, what do you want for the property? And then finally, their full name, uh, email, and phone number. Now, here's the deal with this. Facebook, when you're using lead forms, all right, you are not allowed, if you are advertising in the real estate and housing category, which we are, you are now to, not allowed to ask for location information. That means you're not allowed to ask for the address of the property that they're looking to sell. So you really have two options. Either A, you can not ask for hardly anything other than just the name, the email address, and the phone number. And if you do that, you are going to get a lot of leads for a very small amount of money five, six dollar leads. However, your contact rate is going to go really, really down because people are, are filling out the information. There's no friction, meaning there's no, we're not asking a lot of questions. So they're not, there's no friction there in that process. And so you're going to get a lot of people that accidentally fill out the lead forms that didn't mean to. So you're going to get people that are just, you know, are, are just not going to be viable leads. And so then the alternative to that is to uh, still not ask for the address. But instead, we are going to ask a bunch of questions that pertain to that property and that location. And so therefore, when we do get a lead, we know that they are motivated. They're qualified. Why? Because why on God's earth would they take a, you know, a few minutes and fill out all that information? Unless they're completely just crazy and love to fill out random forms on Facebook. If they are, then hey, all power to them. But I really, uh, 
by doing that, then we're just getting more information from them and thus allowing us to make sure that the leads that we're getting uh, are, are good and we're going to have a high contact rate. And so that's why the lead form, uh, that's why we ask a lot of questions like this one on the lead form. Now, um, the other question that was asked from Sterling in the same thread was, what was uh, the daily budget on that? And so he said that the daily budget was $30 a day on that daily budget. Now, a uh, couple of things I want to point out about that, about the daily budget, and I actually have some guidelines here about the daily budget. Here's my recommendations about the daily budget. Um, if you are, let me move this over. If I'm... You know, the, the way that the budgeting works on Facebook is that the budget is daily and it resets every day. This is in comparison to, say, Google ads, because on Google ads, what happens is that you're going to give Google your budget for the month. And, you know, and then what they're going to do is they're going to appropriate that budget depending on the search volume of the keywords that you select if you're doing pay-per-click. So what will happen is that some days you may not have hardly any spend. Other days you might have, like one day you might spend $50, the next day you could spend $300 because now there's a bunch of people uh, typing in. And so now Facebook is going to try to see if, we, if they can get you some impressions. And the problem with that is, is that it's just very volatile. And so that's why I don't recommend Google pay-per-click for beginning uh, real estate investors. Uh, Facebook, the way it works is a daily budget. They will spend your money. It's 100% guaranteed that Facebook will spend your money. However, they're not going to go over that. Maybe they might go over, you know, 30 cents over or, you know, a, a very small minuscule amount. But at the end of the day, they're going to use all of your budget. But when you put in a daily budget, you know that it's not going to go past that amount. So that's your, that's, that's your stop loss. That's the most that you're going to lose that one day. And so if you're running ads nationwide, I recommend, you know, a budget of no more than $35. Now, higher, higher budgets do work. However, you know, when you're, when you're beginning, you know, I recommend that you start off with a lower budget and we have students actually start off with a budget of $20 nationwide. And, um, I recommend that you start off with a lower budget to make sure that everything is right. Um, if you do this correctly, you start ads at, you know, midnight tonight. And then at the end of the day, you're going to have leads. You're going to have people that have filled out your lead form and have requested an offer on the property. And if, you know, if you're advertising 35 bucks a day and you don't get any leads, then something is wrong and you have to relook at, hey, your setup and everything else. If you're targeting a smaller geographic region, so let's say that I'm targeting, you know, Dade and Broward or maybe Florida, and I'm targeting them with a budget of, say, you know, $30 a day, then uh, the cost per lead is going to be higher. So that means that I'm going to have to spend $30 a day for a longer period of time in order to see results versus if I was spending, you know, 30 to $35 a day nationwide, I'm going to see results the same day. My recommendation is for you to advertise nationwide, start, get activity coming, get leads, and then you can always fine tune it. You can fine tune it by grouping states together that you want to target for Facebook ads and do it that way. It will increase your cost per lead, but it may get you in, uh, in, in those states that you really want to do deals in. So there you have it. I wanted to take the time to uh, show you a case study of what happens when you implement the strategy correctly. And then also, uh, I thought it would be interesting for me to share the thread and the back and forth so you have a better understanding of, hey, what are some of the nuances that made this work here for Caesar? So do me a favor. If you like this video and this format, let me know. Hey, Chico, that was really informative. I really like it. And most importantly, there's going to be a couple of videos that will pop up here that will go deeper into this particular topic, including nationwide wholesaling. So make sure you watch those videos. And if you are interested in getting more information so that I can help you implement the strategy, then go ahead and click on the link in the description. And that way you can attend the training that I have that will go deeper into this subject.